Forgiveness, kindness of a savior, the hope of nations. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Good morning, Down River. Good morning. Yeah, welcome to worship this morning on this last day of August. Oh, last Sunday of August. That's right, last Sunday of August. So, well, everybody look. A lot of people look forward to September. It, uh, you know, it's the cool nights and the nice days. But uh, and school starts, right? Isn't that exciting? Yay! I don't see kids jumping up and down cheering, but that's okay. Uh, well, welcome to worship here at 14400 Beach Daily. I'm Bill Curtis, and I'll be going through some of the announcements and welcome you today. And 
Let's start off by singing a song. So if you can, please rise and let's join together and sing our first song, I Am Free. Please be seated, if you will. I have a few announcements to go through uh, this morning. Today is uh, comfort in the kitchen. Pick up your meals for your taco salad kits, and those will be available right at the uh, back window uh, at the end of service. A women's book study will begin September 5th, and they'll meet each first and third Thursday of the month at 1 p.m. in the church lobby. I think there's an update. Oh, not just women, so women and men are invited. Yeah, so if you, uh, if, you do, if you are interested in being part of that women's study, please put a, make a note on the Connect card, or you can uh, talk to Janine Walker, and she will order a book for you. And you'll know Janine Walker because she will be reading the scripture and the call to worship in a few minutes. Monthly potluck on September 8th, so that's two weeks from today. There will be a monthly potluck, and it will bring a dish that includes some fall ingredient. Apples, cabbage, broccoli, carrots, pears, pumpkins, sweet potatoes, anything that uh, is a fall-related food, which is just about every food out there, is a fall-related food. So bring something, and please note on the uh, whatever you bring if there are any nuts or... Uh, or seafood in there for those that have allergies. We want to make keep everybody safe, so please make a note of that, and that'll be September 8th after worship. Church conference is on September 12th. Everyone is invited to join at 7 p.m. The uh, PRT team, which is the staff parish team, 
uh, will meet at 5.30 p.m. with the district superintendent, and then at 7, it will be a joint uh, church conference with three other churches at the same time. So that'll be, a, that'll be the first time we've done it like that, so it'll be quite interesting. So if you're available, please join in, and uh, the link for the Zoom call will be sent out to you if you are, well, to everybody on the uh, list. So if you're interested, please write your name on the Connect card and uh, so we can get that out to you. Sunday, September 15th. Yoo-hoo! Pastor will be having a pizza on the patio, which will be here at the church, probably out there on the, under the overhang um, or wherever they decide to have it. But it'll be uh, pizza with the pastor on the patio. So be prompt. <laughs> Sorry. Now it'll be right after service. And in the back table, there is a list that you can put, uh, you can make a check mark on there if there's a favorite pizza you'd like to have. And just put a check mark on there and they'll see what they can do about ordering that pizza. They all look delicious to me. So uh, please uh, take a minute to do that and please join the pastor on September 15th and Pastor and Deborah on September 15th after church. That is, in fact, the pastor's birthday that day, too. So. Uh, on September 26th, we have a lot of things going on here. There is a blood drive here at Down River Church. It'll be right in here in the, uh, in the sanctuary. A blood drive with Versity Blood Services. They're the, uh, um, some people like to think they're a competitor of the Red Cross. I just think that they are an addition to the Red Cross. And they supply local hospitals with blood. Uh, so uh, if you are inclined, please sign up for that. Uh, if you're used to giving blood at uh, the Red Cross, many times you're laying, you're laying flat on a table. At the Versity Blood Draws, you get to sit in, a, sit in a nice little recliner chair and give blood. So if you're interested, please consider donating. I will be here all day that day. Uh, right now, there's uh, plenty of spots to sign up. So please uh, take a minute and consider signing up and donating blood on September 26th. Now we will have Janine Walker lead us in our call to worship. Oh, the second song. First? Oh, that's no, we'll do the call. To, we'll do the call to worship before the second song. <laughs> Please join me in this morning's call to worship. In the silent sanctuaries, in our homes, wherever we are in these moments of worship. Early each morning, God waits to greet us with joy and wonder. We wait to find ourselves enveloped in grace. During these days of worry, in this time of uncertainty and fear, Jesus challenges us with the possibility of faith. Even in these times of caring for others as well as ourselves, we can offer healing and hope to others. In the shadowed evenings when fear lurks outside and we long to hear the lullabies of grace, the spirit is with us. The light of life shines on us from early morning until we say our prayers, comforting us in the shadows of sleep. Amen. This morning's scripture reading is from Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. Be careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs of the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and now for our kids' moment. All right, I didn't even have to call them. Oh, we are we are evolving. Yes, we are. 
They know when their moment is. Good morning, guys. How you doing? Is that Meech? You want to come up? Yeah, I, I don't blame you. Yeah. So listen, are we excited about, you know, going to school, going back to school? Are we excited? Yeah, we're excited. We're, right? She says, no, not really. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm just going to chill out. So listen, we're excited about going to school. So are we kind of, you know, nervous? Are you kind of nervous about going to school, back to school? Kind of nervous, yeah. Yeah, are you guys kind of nervous about our kids going back to school? No. no. <laughs> you guys have to play around long now. <laughs> Yeah, I, well, I'm kind of nervous about you guys going to school, too, so, you know. But listen to this. We should not be nervous because we have what's called a superpower. You guys have a superpower, too. Guess what it's called? Anyone take a guess? Faith. Faith, there it is. Our superpower is faith. So when we have faith in God, we can ready ourselves to go to school and have a fun time, right? So we're going to use our faith this summer to go to school. Are we going to use our faith to say, you know what, I'm going to be strong enough to walk through those doors and whatever happens, happens. Oh, well, we hope everything that happens is good, right? Right? So we use our faith as our cape, as our superpower, right? You gonna do that for us? Are you gonna help us, parents, grandparents? And those who don't have kids, you are responsible too. So thank you for coming up. Just give them a round of applause. But before you go, I do have a, our camp video this, this, uh, this Sunday. So come on, you guys, come on down here so we can check out our camp video. Right here, hang out with Pastor John.
is that guy? Before we stand and before we sing, I just want to tell you a little bit about uh, the camp. We did have uh, four uh, young folks from Guadalupe to fly in. They did not know a lot of English, so we had a couple of interpreters that were there uh, that made it really, really interesting and connecting with these folks from Guadalupe. And hopefully we can send folks from the U.S. to Guadalupe next year so that we can do this kind of exchange uh, thing. And so, um, yeah, we had a ball and uh, I am just now rejuvenating from camp. So uh, it's good that we support it. It is a district-wide, it is not a district-wide event. Now it is a conference-wide event. So yeah, we get funding from the conference. So yeah, we had a ball. So let us stand and let us sing. Yeah. 
God is good and all the time. Good morning, church. Good morning, Down River. How are you this wonderful, wonderful morning? I know I left my coffee down there, so it's a long way to get my coffee. Oh, look. Thank you so much. Ah, you all got to have coffee in the morning. I want to um, I want to thank you uh, for supporting our worship experience as we um, challenge ourselves uh, to do uh, something different, keeping with some of the past hymns, right, and songs, and at the same time we're evolving, right, Tim? We're evolving um, uh, into this new era of expressing uh, or how to express our love. Uh, for God through music, songs, and the Word. In this process, we're going to be searching now, just to let you know, we're going to be searching for new songs, different and cool ways of grafting in uh, the hymns as we, as we know them from old. And together we'll make this Down River experience uh, an experience for everyone. Amen? If you desire to sing or have a new song, or if you have an older hymn on your heart, feel, feel free, please feel free to let myself or Tim know so that we can make an effort uh, to be a part, so that, could, that can be a part of our worship experience. Let us give our worship team some support that they need. Let's just give them some support. Uh, as a child, in my, in my culture, my parents always believed in going to church. Raise your hand if your parents did the same. My mother more than my, my dad, although my dad came to know Christ in the later, uh, later in his life, it was my mother that persisted that we went to church. As a younger age, I thought that... Um, that's just what you did as a family, right? You just go to church. We were brought up um, a, a Baptist in the 60s. Uh, we later became uh, Methodist and United Methodist. Now, I, I don't know why. I, I have some speculations, though. I believe my mother wanted more of a... Um, um, a teaching experience than a preaching experience. I believe that my mom wanted to be socially challenged to do something that would help others, you know, help families and help folks around the neighborhood. And she wanted to be involved in something that would bring the community together in its diversity. My mother was a social worker. She was the first black woman supervisor appointed by Lansing, Michigan to reside over the Detroit area. So let's give it up for mom, praise her. Her faith in God moved her to educate herself. Her faith in God moved her to position herself so that God could use her. Her faith in the Lord guided her to a life, a life of service to others. Her faith called her to a life of respect and decency. Mom was ministry-minded. She believed that feeding the hungry and clothing the naked was an essential part of Christianity. And she believed with hard work, faith in God, and faith in yourself, you could achieve the impossible. She did. I believe that that's why I am here today, because of my faith in the Lord and because I'm trying to live in the footsteps of my mother and my father. Now, I'm not saying that uh, the Baptist church didn't do all those, those wonderful things, I believe, that they did. I just think that the, the black Baptist church, uh, the forces uh, or the focus was more on worship services on Sunday than attending the social issues through the week, including uh, Sundays. 
Mom was more of a social justice type of, of, of challenged person. She also attended a church that offered the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King a clergy position because, and he didn't accept it, of course, but because uh, she was a front line, an on the front line person. And that's what God is calling us to be, Downriver, an on the front line congregation. Jesus was concerned about people more than people obeying the law. Jesus had compassion on us because he saw that sin could destroy our relationship with God. So Jesus interceded. Amen. Jesus stepped in. Jesus stood in front of and advocated for and eventually gave his life that we might live a life with God. Mission impossible? No. This also became mission accomplished. Today we live for God, and today Paul reminds us how to do that and how to be successful in our journey. But Paul had no idea that Pastor John was going to be standing up here today uh, delivering a joke before the sermon. So here we go. This is a hard one. A pastor was finishing a exciting sermon. You know about those sermons, Reverend, don't you? A temperous sermons. With great expression, he said, if I had all the beer in the world, I'd throw it in a river. And with even greater emphasis, he said this, if I had all the wine in the world, I'd throw it in a river. And then he finally said at the bottom of his sermon, if I had all of the whiskey in the world, I'd throw it in the river, and then he sat down. The song leader stood up and cautiously and announced with a smile, for our closing song, let us sing hymn number 365, Shall We Gather? <laughs> Shall we gather at the river? Let us, let us pray. God, let us gather. No, let's start over. God, we give you thanks for your presence among us and every day. Lord, continue to challenge us to obedience, to adhere to the teachings of Jesus Christ and the apostles. We continue to lift up those that are sick and unable to be with us. We're asking, O oh Lord, that you send your angel to those like Virginia, for Matthew, for he's mourning the passing of his partner. We're praying for Gary and Tim and Heather and Meg and Candace and Fred and Jill and Peggy and the Reinhardt's family, Ashley, Alex, Dana, Kevin, Cora, Robert's family, Miss Frenchie and Granny and James and, and, and Mara and the family, Denise and, and Daryl and Susan Tyler Davis out of Central. We pray for those in Gaza and Ukraine, Ukraine and in Russia. And we pray for our country, especially in this time. We're praying for our, our leader, uh, our kids uh, ministry leader, Lindsay, as she continues to, uh, to battle with illness. We pray for her and we pray for our Down River Church family and all those whom I didn't mention, but you know, oh God, who they are. We ask that you pour your Holy Spirit on these gathered today and have us to spread the gospel that will transform the world. Bless our finances as we hold up our, our, uh, our tray of tithes and offerings. Bless them, multiply them as we rely on you to feed, not only to feed others, but you rely, we rely on you to rely on us to do the work uh, in your name and for your sake. Your grace, O oh Lord, is enough. 
Remind us, though, Lord, the prayer that you taught us, that we might repeat it with reverence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. Amen. Um, before we started, I, I forgot to ask, uh, are there any first-time visitors with us? If there are, uh, we, we, just, we love you. If you're online and your first time and your first time is visiting us online, we want to just wave to you guys to wave. I, I think they can see the top of your hands. Okay, all right. Um, up and coming, I just want to make a couple of announcements. Get ready for a town hall meeting because we're going to have to have a town hall meeting to talk about some of the business of the church. So we're going to make that date available to you very soon. Uh, the new bus, the buses are out there. Amen. Um, our youth had named the buses. One of them is named Naomi, and the other one is named Ruth. Of course, yeah, yeah. So I don't know which one is which. I think Naomi is the bigger bus, the 28-seater, and Ruth is the smaller bus. Okay, so uh, we wanted to uh, just let you know that those buses are, are here and available uh, to us. Do we have any birthdays? Any birthdays? Any anniversaries? Any anniversaries? Okay, all right, let's, let's, let's carry on. Last week, we talked about the construction of the temple. You remember last week? Solomon had made a dwelling for God and how God had filled that temple. How that temple we talked about last week was sacred. Amen? We talked about how that temple was sacred. And how we should treat our temple. Who, what is our temple? Our bodies, right? How we should treat our temple, temple sacred. Because like Solomon's temple, our body is where God dwells. Our bodies are living temples in which the Lord our God, through the Holy Spirit, resides. God resides in all of us. So we learn to make sure that our temple is as clean as possible and as to accept the presence of the Lord to dwell in us, around us, through us, beside us, and because of us. Amen? The dwelling of God's Spirit should, should be a desire for us in our Christian journey. Somebody say amen. Amen. And we should desire the freedoms that come with God who dwells in us. The desire to help one another, like the Good Samaritan. You remember that story in Luke 10? The story is about freedom in Christ, really, if you really look at it. Lying beside the, the road left for dead, being passed by a priest, a Levite and a religious leader, the church, the supposedly righteous, and then a stranger helped. It was a stranger who freely gave. It was a stranger who put others before himself. This stranger, this Samaritan, who was considered, you know, other people, this Samaritan not only helped, but kept giving until the situation was resolved. There is freedom in doing the work of Jesus Christ. Jesus said this, and especially tied this with the Good Samaritan story. Jesus says, there is no greater love than when one lays down their lives for their friends. Amen. What about another freedom? Another freedom in Christ is the freedom of love. Amen. Not just to love, but the freedom 
of love. The desire to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. As a matter of fact, Jesus said that this is the greatest commandment. And to love your neighbor commandment is just like it. The freedom to love. The freedom to love was exhibited by Jesus Christ. Jesus showed that love wins the day. Seven ways that Jesus showed love for us. He healed the sick. Remember when he saw the large crowds in Matthew? He recorded that it was recorded that Jesus had saw them and had compassion on them. But not only had compassion on them, he went to them and he healed them. Jesus had compassion when he cried when Lazarus, his friend, died. What did he do? He raised Lazarus from the dead. Number three, when the crowd had been with them for three days, for three days without a meal, what did Jesus do? He fed them. Jesus, number four, preached the kingdom, teaching us many things out of his love for us. That's out of Mark 6. Number five, Jesus cast out demons and even evil spirits. Why did he do that? Because he loved us. Jesus interceded for the disciples and for us in the church. Remember the prayer that he prayed for himself and then the prayer that he prayed for his disciples? He also prayed for us. He interceded. He stepped in the gap. He went to God before and he talked and he interceded for us. And then finally, number seven, Jesus went to Calvary. He went to the cross without a hesitation. He went and he died for us. He died for us to live in eternity with God forever. He gave his life. All of this love is love in action. Plain and simple. These are the, the freedoms. And when you look at it, these are the freedoms that come with a relationship with Jesus Christ. These freedoms cannot come from any other source, only from God. And we should rejoice that through our faith in Jesus, we are saved. And we can witness to this plan, this love and action, because it is who we are. In Jesus Christ. It is what we do in Christ Jesus. There's a quote from um, Curtis Henderson, Curtis Hutchins, who um, warns us to stay on the path and not to veer left or right in our journey with Christ. He writes this, our lifestyle, our language, our attitude, and the manner of dress reflect on his name. He leads us in the path of righteousness for his namesake. Unless you are honestly convinced that the thing in question will bring glory to God, just don't do it. If what you are about to do will not bring glory to God, in other words, just don't do it. Paul shares these same sentiments, these same warnings for the church as expressed in the letter to the churches in Asia Minor in the province of uh, the Ephesians. Paul writes this, be very careful. And that's always a warning, right? When you, all, when you open up the Bible, when you read those words, be very careful. You have to stop yourself and ask why. Why must I be very careful? I think, in essence, the writer is saying these words because he doesn't want us to stumble in our journey to the cross. He doesn't want us to fall. He doesn't want us to get tricked up. He doesn't want us to, to fail. He wants us to have a smooth relationship on the way to the cross, on the way to Christ Jesus. 
He says, be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as what? As wise. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. That's a warning in itself, amen? Anytime we turn on the TV, we know the days are evil, amen? We know the wars that are going on. We know the loss of life, the loss of limb. We know the loss of friendship. We know that these days are evil. And so Paul is expressing what Christ, I believe, in his heart expresses because the Holy Spirit speaks through Paul. Paul is saying, be very careful. Make every opportunity to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Make every opportunity to love someone. Make every opportunity to walk past someone and then go back and help them and pick them up. Make every, every opportunity because the days are evil. Paul is saying to be sophos. That's Greek for wise. To be wise as unto the Lord and the teaching of the apostles. Also, is meaning unwise. Those things that are not of the Lord, but of humankind. So what do you mean, Paul, to be wise? How can I be wise in the Lord? And I know when you read certain scriptures, I know we ask ourselves, how can I be wise in the Lord? Where do I find these answers? In the world? No. But in the scriptures, remembering that the scriptures are but a glimpse into the very heart of God. Listen to these wise scriptures on being wise in the Lord. Proverbs 1 and 7 says, Fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instructions. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says this, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge him and he'll make straight your paths. James 1 and 5 says this, if any of us lack wisdom, if any of us lack wisdom, let them do what? Let them ask of God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given to him. When we rely on ourselves for wisdom, we're telling God, Lord, I already got this thing figured out. And I don't need your help. Did you know that Solomon, remember Solomon of last week? Solomon was one of the wisest of all in history. And still Solomon struggled to follow God in all of his walks of life. Still Solomon sinned. Same is true about us. There are areas in our lives where, where wisdom is apparent to any who look at us. However, there are other areas in our lives. Somebody say, come on, pastor. There are other areas in our lives where we could exercise just a little bit more discernment. Amen. And more closely, God's precepts, right? Don't feel bad because... Humankind has the ability to use logic and emotion. What we know about reality is limited to even our own experiences and those, those we hear from. Whatever we don't experience or learn from others, we cannot know. Here's the thing, folks. God knows everything at all times. Nothing is hidden from God. But from us, many things are hidden. So to reality, know God, to know God is to trust and to have faith that God's knowledge, because it is God's knowledge, will guide us in some things, guide us in little things, guide us in a few things. No, 
God will guide us in all things. And Paul urges us, the church, to stay in the will of God. Stay close to Jesus Christ and all his commandments and teachings. Therefore, says Paul, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. The Lord's will is that we walk in the light, in case we didn't know. The Lord's will for the church is that we walk in the light. Ephesians 5 and 8 says this, For you were once darkness, but now you are the light in the Lord. Live as children of the light, for the first fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Hmm. What happens when we walk in the light? Anybody? What happens when we walk in the light? We're safe. But there's something else that happens when we walk in the light. Everything becomes what? Visible when we walk in the light. Nothing is hidden, but there's something that also happens in the light. And guess what it is? Christ's light illuminates everything. Everything will come to light. Everything that was in the dark will one day be in the light. Oh, Lord, I'm convicted now. <laughs> Everything that was in the dark in my life under Christ's light will come to fruition in the light. How else are we to walk in the will of the Lord? Paul says, this is how you do it. Jonathan, you walk in love. You walk in love. Paul expresses this in the previous chapter. In chapter 5, Paul says this, Therefore, be imitators. Be imitators of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ also has, walk, has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. I think that passage, Reverend, says to us that when we walk in in love, oh, we smell good to God. Without even Old Spice deodorant. <laughs> love, love, light, and wisdom. Those are the will of God for us to immerse ourselves into. In July of um, 1914, marked the deadliest war of the ages, World War I. It lasted four years. And the casualties counted for were over nine million soldiers, seven million civilians. In the winter of 1914, something amazing happened. It was an illumination of Christ. It was people who walked in love. The people who walked in wisdom and walked in the light. Something, something amazing happened. And you might have heard it on that Christmas Eve. That was the first, first Christmas of World War I. That Christmas Eve. The sounds of gunfire seems to cease across enemy lines. In the distance, both German and British heard sounds of brass instruments playing in the distance. The day rose and both German and British troops emerged from their trenches and joined in the singing of Christmas carols. Out of their own native tongue, that bared each other a Merry Christmas. They exchanged presents, cigarettes, plum pudding, 
They played soccer together. They gathered their dead and retreated to each side after hours of being one, unified in the spirit of love, of wisdom, and of light. This act, it, this act served as a heartening proof, however brief, that breath of brutal clash of weapons, the soldiers essentially, their essential humanity endured. Even a world war could not stop the love of Christ. A world war. The will of God is to listen to Micah 6 and 8. He has shown you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. That is the will of God. Even in her, even in her blindness uh, and in her struggles of life, she let the Spirit of God dwell in her soul. Even, when her, even in her sinful nature, she let the wisdom of God guide her. Even though she could not see one single note, she knew, she knew that the Lord had saved her. And she could not help but profess to the world, blessed assurance Jesus is mine, oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heirs of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Fanny Crosby, out of her despair, wrote that song that we sing, we should sing every Sunday. There is nothing God doesn't know about our lives, says David Jeremiah. You may know the past, and you may know the present, but God also knows the future. Choose today to walk in love. Choose today to walk in wisdom. Choose today to walk in Jesus Christ. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap this morning. God is good all the time. Let us stand and let us sing our closing song.
Amen. Amen. You know, it isn't hard to find out what the will of the Lord is. We challenge ourselves, especially in these days. November's coming, the presidential race. It seems as if families and communities might even be divided, it seems. But I know when we institute God's love in everything, in all things, that God is mightier than our thoughts. God is mightier than the U.S. God is mightier than the world. The Creator God desires for us to walk in God's will. And when we show that, and we start to transform the world. I know it's going to be hard in November with different family members with different perspectives. But if you give a little bit of wisdom, a lot of love, and show unity in what you do, then you will have shown Christ in the flesh to others. Do that. Oh, and go in peace. And may the peace of Christ go with you all. Amen. Amen.